and welcome to Foraging and Cooking with Kids. If you're foraging for food in the wild, be 100% sure that you pick the right kind. Use books and apps to make no mistakes. And kids, never eat anything out of the wild without asking your parents. In this episode, we are collecting nanny berries. Nanny berries are also called cheap berries or sweet vibranum, wild raisins, nanny plum, cowberries. Nanny berries grow on large bushes. They are known for the lush green leaves that turn red in the fall. It is a large bush with lots of stems and it grows also a lot of suckers. It grows between 5 to 20 feet tall with a length of 5 to 10 feet. The leaves are perfectly veined with long tips about 5 to 10 centimeters, 2 to 4 inches long, oval shaped with crowd short sharp teeth. The berries are a half inch and grows on a red stemmed cluster. I find them in our area always near streams in large and sunny areas, but also sometimes in shade. As soon they turn blue purplish, they are ready to pick. And if you are not fast enough, the birds and the small animals, they will get them all first. Oh, good job! Right in our beautiful nanny berries. We have down there poison ivy. Identification of poison ivy. Compound leaves with three leaflets. Leaves of three, let it be. The middle leaflet stem is longer as the stems on the other two. The edges of the leaves can be toothed or smooth. In fall, it gets white berries. So always pay attention of your surrounding. We also have a false berry here, what can be mistaken as nanny berry, when you don't follow all identification signs. This is the woodbine, or also called thicket creeper, false Virginia creeper, grape woodbine. They are toxic. It can climb up to 30 feet high, therefore the part of the name creeper. Leaves are alternate with five leaflets. Leaves are two and a half till four inches long and one and a half till two and a half wide. The leaves are toothed with the top surface green and glossy and turn red in fall with net veins. And the veins are sometimes hairy. So please pay very good attention what you're picking. Back to our nanny berries. The berry is edible straight from the bush when they're ripe. It has a big stone seed, more seeds than pulp. It tastes like prune in my opinion. That is why I chose the recipe yeast dumplings. In Germany, you can buy on the yearly Christmas market Gamknödel, translated yeast dumplings. And the traditional filling is prune jam. I will show you how to get all the fruit fresh from the berries and how to make those delicious dumplings. We collected around 10 cups of berries and first we're washing them very thoroughly and take all the little stems and leaves out. We cover the berries with water and let them cook between 20 and 30 minutes. Then we take our food meal and try to separate the seeds and skin from the pulp. This is not an easy process. The nanny berry has a very, very dry and thick pulp. So as long as the pulp is hot, it's coming off easy. As soon it's cooling off, it's getting very hard. So you have to repeat that process a couple more times. 
So you use the mill or a little thifter, how I do it here, to just squish it all the way through. If the skins are cooled off again, repeat the process. Put it back in the pot, put some water in, and cook it up and squish it back out. So on the end, you have only the seeds and the skin left. After everything is separated, the berry pulp is very thin because you use quite a lot of water to get this all out. So we start cooking it down. You simmer it on the smallest you can do that you don't burn it. And it's getting thicker and thicker from minute to minute till it has the consistency of butter. We have now nanny berry butter. The butter is already sweet. You don't need to do anything with this if you want to. Please feel free and mix whatever you would like with this. With sugar, cinnamon, pumpkin spice, whatever you would like. Now let's start with our recipe for our dumplings. For the pre-dough, we need three tablespoons and a half teaspoon of instant yeast, five tablespoons of milk, 50 gram flour, and one tablespoon of sugar. For the main dough, 70 gram butter, 250 milliliter milk, 60 gram sugar, one egg, and 500 gram flour. For the toppings, we mix together some poppy seeds and some powdered sugar. First, we heat up the milk and mix the warm milk with the yeast together and then combine all the other ingredients to make the pre-dough to a little ball. Then we cover it up and let it sit for 10 minutes. And then we start a water bath for the main dough. A water bath is where you use a pot, simmer some water and put a metal bowl on top of it where you mix the ingredients back together that the ingredients start heating up very gently. First we're melting down a little bit the butter. And then we're adding the milk to the butter. Then the sugar and mix it all the way till the sugar is all the way dissolved. And then the egg. Now we're adding the pre-dough with the flour together and add the liquid ingredients on top of it. Now let's mix it all together till we have one solid dough ball. Now we're separating the dough in six pieces and make some dough balls out of them. After forming the balls, we powder some flour on top of it and let them sit covered up for 30 minutes. When they're double the size, we start the next step. Now we start with the nanny berry butter filling.
After finishing the filled balls, we cover them up one more time for 30 minutes. Now we boil some water with salt in it. And when it starts boiling, we transfer the dumplings into the hot water and simmer it for seven minutes. <clears throat> After seven minutes, we turn them around and simmer them for seven more minutes. When they're finished, you serve them right away with some vanilla sauce or butter and the poppy seed sugar mixture on top of it. Traditionelle Germknödel vom Weihnachtsmarkt. Traditional yeast dumplings from the Christmas market. That we have nanny berries instead plums inside. Next week, we will talk about duckweed, how amazing this wheat is and how delicious it can be too. Till then, we will see you next week with foraging and cooking with kids.